Sometimes in biomechanics, you will be dealing with big deformations, like what you see in the heart, skin, or stomach. Other times, you will be dealing with tissues that undergo deformations so small that it allows you to use simple approximations to quantify them. Picture a square of tissue. Assume that the displacement gradients are small, such as much less than 1%. Note that this assumption only applies accurately when strains and rotations are very small. When deformations are that small, we can use the infinitesimal Cauchy strains to calculate the strains underwent by the tissue. Now remember the displacement vector u. We can write down displacement gradients to calculate our normal strain components along the different coordinate directions. When you are trying to predict how a shape would change by having a certain displacement gradient, it may help to visualize how this square changes with different component changes. DUY divided by the product of DY times DY and DUY divided by DX times DX, which are both basically DUY, will bump the square up at different points. Similarly, DUX divided by DX times DX and DUX divided by DY times DY, which are both basically DUX, will shift the square to the side along the X axis at different points. The X component of the normal infinitesimal Cauchy strain can be found through EXX, which equals DUX divided by DX. The Y component through EYY, which equals DUY divided by DY, and the Z component through EZZ, which equals DUZ divided by DZ. These are all small changes in the displacement along each respective direction. But that's to find the normal Cauchy strain components, right? What if we want to find the shear Cauchy strain components? Turns out, there is one equation that you can use to find either normal or shear Cauchy strain components. The equation is the following. Eij, which is the Cauchy strain, equals 1 half dui divided by dxj plus duj divided by dxi. If you were trying to find exy, you would get exy equals 1 half dux divided by dy plus duy divided by dx. But notice also that if you were trying to find exx, you would get exx equals 1 half dux divided by dx plus dux divided by dx. But notice that this simplifies into simply dux divided by dx, which is the same answer we got earlier. All the Cauchy strain components, both normal and shear, belong to the Cauchy strain tensor, sometimes called the infinitesimal strain tensor. When you analyze the Cauchy strain tensor, you will quickly notice that there is symmetry going on. From the general Cauchy strain equation, distortions on the xy plane are the same regardless of whether it is exy or eyx, since you are adding the same numbers in the parentheses. The same happens to distortions on the xz plane and to the distortions on the zy plane. When no shear is happening, only normal components of the Cauchy strain will be non-zero. That is, either or both dux divided by dx and dy divided by dy will be non-zero. As a result, the shape will seem like it is stretched or simply enlarged. When shear happens, the shape will seem more deformed, as if stretches and enlargements happened at an angle. In these cases, dux divided by dy and DUY divided by DX will be non-zero. The important thing to remember here is that the Cauchy linear strain will not be a valid strain unless rotations are either zero or infinitesimal. As a result, at the end of the day, the Cauchy strain definition is not a very good or exact measure of shape change. Okay, I know this is quite a bit, so that's all for now, and I will see you next time.